Bonjour et bienvenue à Rendez-vous avec Yasmin et Kuma. Today we discuss French novels in translation, the joys of translation and how much is lost in translation. The difficulties encountered, the distortions in translation and how faithful the translation is to the original text and of course lots more than that. We're happy to join you from this lovely bookshop, the Expographics Bookshop in Palavatta. The joy of reading is also a place like this that houses a fabulous collection of books for your reading pleasure. Bonsoir, Dr. Vijay Sekhar. It's been quite a while since we met you on Bonsoir many years ago. It's a pleasure to have you back on Rendezvous now. Yes, uh, Yasmin, yes, Kumar, thank you for accepting me. And it's a pleasure is reciprocal. Any good pleasure is reciprocal. Dr. Piyasir Vijay Sekhar was Sri Lanka's deputy representative to UNESCO in France. He has earned a reputation for his several um, translations of original French texts to Sinhala. Dr. Vijay Sekhar, what inspired you to translate French novels to Sinhala? And what is the criteria uh, to select which novel to translate? First, uh, if you want to say one word about it, it's a provincial culture which attracted me in, in, from the Boulanger, Bakkarabiria. But I also thought of, of my own readers back home in Sri Lanka, how to share with them it was my second, that made me to translate it. Before translating, of course, I saw so many other Bavignol works on cinema, on TV. Criteria, yes, there are two major criteria I looked into. One is the national, well, Banyol is, is the uh, Academy of France, you know, after the war, first, first uh, cinema man in the Academy. And secondly, about the international uh, reputation that he has already with 22 dramas, most of them turned into films later on. What methods do you think he uses when translating, especially uh, proper nouns and names of persons and places? Generally, I recognize communicative <coughs> methodology is perhaps the best for me in translating from French village culture into Sri Lankan village culture. And in, you know, in, 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 while doing so, change names, places names, toponymy and anthronymy are very important because I, for Amabal in Fogdabalonche, I said Amabala, since Singhala, it has some meaning. Uh, so, of course, Professor Peter Newmark gives 24 points, good points, favorable for the com following communicative thing. He says the semantic is the other, other version. Semantic is much more on the meaning as the word semantic means, whereas communicative is his message. So I thought the message to the people, the readers, readers' culture, to the reader, that's the Singhala in this case. Semantic translators are not allowed to trans change or add or improve or even correct. When the, when whereas communicative people can have the right to improve, have the right to correct, have the right to, even the logic can be changed so long as the message is, is respected. So that's the roughly the... That's your methodology. Yes. Semantic and the communicative methodologies. I enjoyed reading Marcel Pagnol's um, uh, La Femme de Boulanger. It's so theatrical and the language is so special. How did you achieve to create the same atmosphere? in Singhala? Yes, most of the dialogues and even terms are from the south of France. I happen to be a man from South Sri Lanka, the tip of the Sri, Sri Lankan island. And I know certain vocabulary of the southerners, 
which are specially with, with, with especially the tonality drag in tonality which is also there in the Marseille accent in south of France so this helped me to find out correct correct uh, tones and also correct words of course the best proof of that it will be goes showing some trans dialogues how f french was put into singular yes this theater starts with monjou monsieur le dalan sutita in singhala it call ai bon escole mahantyo ai bon pe tun ko me sava o varadak na escole mahantyo honding innawa mamme o heken hichu udawwa killanne kiyala ohe dannawane me was Kasamira, our surutu kade daan in me samagan lokka surutu kade is is virod taba, and samagan lokka is jeron the circle, so that's more meaningful perhaps in Sinhala than even in French original French. This is the opening of the theatre. baker's forgiving attitude but takes out his hidden feelings on Pomponet, his she-cat, for having abandoned her male companion Pompon. He hears abusive language but indirectly meant for his wife. <coughs> We then asked Dr. Vijay Sekara what he felt about translating and especially finding Sinhala words to match the abusive language in French. Yeah, as uh, Yasmin told earlier, they are not that abusive. They are more, more forgiving and in a way self-explaining uh, self his own situation, he feeling guilt, uh, self-guilt. The baker, old man, marrying a young girl, I am, I'm not the man who should have married. It's, it's a feeling of guilt and saying, you should have had a much more a stronger, younger, handsome person. So these are all excuses which is completely contrary to some of the two Brahminic attitude by the Jataka stories, about five or six Buddhist Jataka stories are there, which touches upon the same subject. But unluckily, there were two Brahmanic, always finding, always finding fault with the woman, always she is the one who has made the mistake, she is un unreliable. So this is, attitude is completely changed by the intervention of uh, Banyol. And what, now let, let me take the three so-called abusive words. In French it is called gas, first is gas. Gas, I have put it as paratie. Paratie, gas is, I think paratie is much stronger than even gas. And second thing is salop. Salop is such a common word now, even even when you buy something unnecessary, qu'est-ce que c'est salopri? This, this salopri is made a, but an adjective or in almost a useless disc. And third, of course, it's proved by the third word they have used in French, odeur. 
or there is trash, waste, kuno in singular. So I have put kuna in feminine, masculine gender, kuni in singular, and paratye, padadye. Padadi is a very common sentence, uh, abusive, so called abusive, but uh, good, strong. Well, I have to add a little more on that. It is thanks to the abuse, so called abusive words that much of the straight fighting is stopped. That's a warning. An abusive word is extremely bitter warning. If you keep on continuing that, I have to hit you, I have to kill you. I have to. So before I, I say, imagine instead of having thousands of millions of women and men sent to wars and fighting each other, if all of them start using abusive words and that's all about it, and take ne start negotiating. So that is their main point. Let's attend to that. That's what they want first, and this is what they want second. This is what they want third. Let's attend to it. Uh, I think United Nations systems should find out abusive, abusive summits uh, which, are, which are corrective. So Siri, you have translated so many French novels into Sinhala. Why not English into Sinhala? Why? What is the reason? Yeah, it's true that I have done about, I think about 10 French works into Sinhala, into directly. I have not abandoned because there, there are so many who can do French, English into Sinhala. So I have let them do the, their own responsibility, their own duty. But I have also done, uh, I think, seven or eight uh, English into Sinhala translations. Uh, I have chosen, for instance, the last seven books that I have just terminated. I have terminated the seventh book now. Five of which are French into Sinhala. They are all, all the seven are Nobel Prize winning authors. First five are French into Sinhala. Other two are Svet, Svetlana Alexievich's Sinky Boys, which won the Nobel Prize in 2015. And Bob Dylan's, which is a very controversial figure who had written only one book and he was awarded the Nobel Prize in 2016, I had translated some of his lyrics, lyric, lyricology into Sinhala. Thank you very much, Siri. It was lovely having you again on our show rendezvous. Thank you, Saul. So thank you both and the team. Time for a break. Stay with us. <laughs> We welcome you with Niroshini Gunasekara, Senior Professor of French at the Department of Modern Languages of the University of Kalania. Bonjour Niroshini. Enjoying the ambiance here at the Expographic Bookstore in Palawata, tell us what was the reason uh, behind your love for the French language many, many years ago. So, bonjour Kumar, bonjour Yasmin. Actually, I started loving French only later. I just, uh, that was the first uh, foreign language that I knew about so I just wanted to learn it and then later I developed this big love for French. So what was your biggest challenge when translating from French to Sinhala? Biggest challenge, challenge was like there are many many challenges when I translate the biggest difference uh, between the two languages is the biggest uh, challenge because I uh, most of the time what happens is I can't find the equivalent in uh, Sinhala. For example I always say like uh, if you say uh, we made love I cannot say it in Sinhala because there is no decent expression that expresses that apart from the medical term or a very vulgar term. So you know I am always faced with big challenges like that since I think there is a big difference between the two uh, cultures 
way of saying, way of feeling, way of looking at things. That's it, I think. Your most recent translation is of David Ferkiner's uh, best-selling book, Les Souvenirs, Souvenirs. Now, what made you want to translate this particular book? A uh, very pra practical reason, because uh, David Ferkiner came to Sri Lanka for the film festival uh, and they showed this film. I was fascinated by the film and I wanted to read the book and when I read it, I thought I was going to translate it because what happened, what normally happens is when I read a book, I start, if I'm going to translate it, I know that I'm translating it already in my head. Now I'm going to read an <coughs> excerpt from uh, my translation of uh, Les Souvenirs uh, of David Van Kinos, which is called Avarjana. And uh, this is, uh, the narrator is the grandson of these, all these people, you know, the grandmother, the grandfather, and he's relating the story of all these people. And this is the place where he's watching the grandfather dying in hospital. And now he's talking about what he could not say to the grandfather. Je voulais lui dire que je l'aimais, mais je n'y suis pas parvenu. J'y pense encore à ces mots et à la pudeur qui m'a retenu dans l'inachèvement sentimental. Une pudeur ridicule en de telles circonstances. Une pudeur impardonnable et irrémédiable. J'ai si souvent été en retard sur les mots que j'aurais voulu dire. Je ne pourrais jamais faire marche arrière vers cette tendresse, sauf peut-être avec les cris maintenant. Je peux lui dire là. I think this is one of the most uh, famous passages of the text. ஏலாவட்டுவாங்க The book is a reflection of the human condition and memory about relationships in the modern world, about the past, continuity and human affection. Niroshini, did you see any relevance to Sri Lankan society and uh, what was the feedback from readers? So, yeah, uh, human relationships. Now, the biggest human relationship that you see uh, in the first part of the novel was uh, the grandfather the grandson and the grandmother i was totally fascinated by this relationship and the grandmother actually i have said it in my introduction also the image that we have when we talk about grandmothers in sri lanka already you know you have this you use this pejorative term archi which means you're old already you feel that that person is old in Sri Lanka, you know, auntie or, you know, those are, those are very negative terms to call someone. But this book proves that a grandmother could also go on living a happy life to the fullest, even while being a very old, in, in her 80s, grandmother, right? So I love that, uh, that uh, character of the grandmother. I love the interaction between the grandmother and the grandson. And then also when the grandmother dies, we hear the story of the narrator and his marriage and the child, you know, a normal relationship. The normal relationship that we normally don't see when we look at it from outside, what's going on in a house, what's going on between a couple, you know, all these things were there. That sensitivity, the things that they show that we wouldn't have seen if we had just looked at a couple. You know, all those things, the sensitivity, especially the sensitivity of the, uh, of the writer. Coming back to the feedback from the Sri Lankan public, Yasmin, actually what I feel is, unfortunately, Sri Lankan reader wants translations of American novels, English, you know, what's written in English, you know, like very easy stories. They want translations of those. And also, I think the promotion for this, the, the European literature, specifically French, you know, because French literature is something that is really intellectual. Many intellectuals have told me, don't ever stop translating. Although at a certain point, I was discouraged by translations. I was thinking, people don't read. People don't read my translation. They say, no, 
people who read, people who know what good literature is, read your translations, re translate them. So, are they a minority? A very small minority, I think. I think it's because they don't. They go for these, you know, uh, you get these big American novels, and then you see the film of the novel also. So they are more familiar with these novels and the films. They want to read it in Sinhala. They just want to know the story of those novels, whether it's a good translation or a bad translation. That's not that's not a problem. Now, in my case, when I translate, I normally it's a research. For me, it's a research because I have also there was a sentence that I could not translate. I asked all these French people in what the, was that? So actually, this is the section. That, this is the little part that I had to omit because uh, you know, like I told you, I could not understand it. I have to tell you in all modesty that I couldn't understand and I had to write to the writer who told me that it didn't mean anything and that I could uh, remove it from the translation. This is the part. Je pensais sûrement qu'il fallait tordre le réel et non pas s'y soumettre. Je voulais raconter des histoires avec deux Polonais, être dans l'héroïsme de la virgule. So it was this part. Je voulais raconter des histoires avec deux Polonais, être dans l'héroïsme de la virgule. Héroïsme de la virgule, I couldn't understand that at all. So he said, no, I just wrote it uh, as a, you know, uh, poetic, you know, in nice poetic idea. language. It's a research. To me, I mean, <clears throat> even if I remove that, that would have that, it is the only place where I remove something from translation and even that with the permission of the author. So your translations could be the result of literary research? Yes, because my thesis was also, my doctoral research was also on translation studies. So yeah, so if, to me it's You use the word research, I was yeah, interested. Yeah, yeah, it's research, it's research, to me it's research. Merci Nirojini de votre participation à Rendezvous. Thank you very much, Yasmin. Thank you very much, Kuma, for inviting me for this fantastic project. And I am so happy to be part of this Bonsoir uh, reborn. and Rendezvous. Reborn, reborn as a Rendezvous. Thank you very much. Merci, Niroshini. Bon courage pour tout le projet à venir. Thank you very, very much. And Stuti. We end with a recital of a translation from French to Sinhala of one of Jean de La Fontaine's fables. This book of about 20 translations of De La Fontaine's Fables was edited by Professor Sarat Amulugama, former Vice-Chancellor of the University of Kerania and also a former Cultural Counselor of the French Embassy in Sri Lanka and former Director of the Alliance Francaise de Colombo, Marie-Hélène Esteve. Kale gahaka eka davasak, vasa sitiya kalu kaputek, Mun kau mak men na bole hotel aran city. Mun kau me panisu andin air dah gan nte balamin ape kapete nalnai de hani kete ehi awa. Subuh dawasa kaputu mitur monawa dau bagi wister boru nama wei mama kian ni satta ki oba hari headai ni dilisen oba ge atatu oba ge ruwa wedi kerai ni. Mekale kurulant naik kamala badent, obatwada tawat kene nometi bawai mata hengen. Ruah pamanak nova thamaga kata hande ati mihiri bawat penwan nte situ kaputa thaman ge hota ari naavita randawa siti goduru hotin vetuni aho polawa matata. Kapati kamin air jayagat ape kapati nari raja. Asalnavi siti kaputa itu mana mehema kiuwa? Yalui, one wu vita kisivak kiai kenek mewan kata, eva asar revatenno apagekus purawanno. Hope you enjoyed our show on French in translation, brought to you here from the Expographics Bookstore in Palavatta. Au revoir till our next rendezvous.